The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Project ARIES live forensic scenario webinar. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Angela Sugertz, Director of Digital Marketing with the Project ARIES team, and I'll be moderating for everyone. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. If you've joined us live or, or watching on demand, we really do appreciate you taking time out of your day to be with us. Um, just a couple of logistics before we get started into the funness. Um, and if you've been with us before, you know the drill. Um, your microphone was automatically muted upon joining the webinar today. Um, we are going to unmute you uh, as an attendee when we get to actually playing the live forensic scenario. So just know that that's coming. Um, you can ask questions and all that kind of stuff. And then if you have a question, you can type it into the question section on your GoToWebinar panel. And then we are recording today's session as well. So you'll be able to watch it for on-demand playback afterward. I'd like to take just a few quick minutes to introduce our wonderful training consultant slash scenario tour guide, if you will, uh, Ms. Kate Frizzell with us today. She's gonna talk a little bit about who we are, um, what we do for cyber education with instructors, and then walk each of you through how to set up your temporary Project Aries account so that we can dive into this cybersecurity forensics scenario. So first, let's jump into a quick poll here. Let me go ahead and launch it. Would love to hear from folks that are joining us today. What is your main challenge teaching cybersecurity forensics or any cyber subject for that matter? Is it a lack of time and budget, lack of subject matter expertise, difficulty designing hands-on lab experiences, minimal interest teaching cyber forensics given some kind of constraint or barrier that you're facing, or just challenges aligning labs to the curriculum. Um, there should be a quick poll window that pops up on your screen for you guys to participate. Um, go ahead and just check maybe the, the main one, maybe all of these are your challenges, which is certainly understandable. <laughs> Good, we're collecting some responses here. Excellent. We'll give it just a few more minutes. There's so many challenges with teaching this particular subject. Um, and we're really excited to help alleviate some of those challenges um, for you guys today. So, excellent. All right, so Kate, we have 33% lack of subject matter expertise, which is totally understandable. Forensics is a very complex um, topic. And then 67% difficulty designing those hands-on lab experiences here. So, um, excellent. Thank you so much for participating in this poll. I'm just going to close that out really quick. Great. All right. Well, again, thanks for participating. And Kate, I'm going to turn it over to you to get us uh, started. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Angela. And um, interesting to see those poll results from all of you. Um, we're definitely going to be taking some time today to go through and hit both of those points for the 33 and 66 percent. Uh, and I think you'll find that whether you're a beginner or if you're uh, incredibly advanced in in any kind of cybersecurity expertise, um, you'll see that there's a way that Project Aries can help you as an instructor or as a student. Uh, so, good morning to all of you and welcome officially to the Project Aries training ground. And uh, here at Project Aries, um, it's our belief that putting cyber readiness in the hands of learners should be literal, just like we're doing today. Um, because our commitment is to you, um, instructors and students with a platform that combines um, realism, really real scenarios, uh, and gamification into hands-on labs that are designed to encourage and empower um, and also engage students in becoming what we like to think of as the next generation of cybersecurity professionals. Um, my name is Kate Frizzell. And on our training ground, so to speak, uh, it's my job here to empower everyone on the workout floor with the education and the equipment and all the encouragement that they need to get to their own personal finish lines. Uh, now, before we get started, you're going to be hearing me reference the training ground a lot today. So I'm going to take a second break down what that means. And here at Project Aries, we like to think about the platform like a gym. So when you walk into the Project Aries gym, you see kinds of training areas that are designed to give you everything that you need to be a top-notch athlete. And then within each of those areas, you'll see equipment that you can use to train specific muscle groups. So 
What does that have to do with you? Well, you inside the Project Aries gym are a personal trainer. Just like in the gym, Project Aries trainers or educators are people who assess the ability of the people that they train, i.e. their students, uh, and they evaluate their students' goals, and then they offer a plan that builds a bridge between that highly sought after before and after photo, if you will. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is cool. Um, but how do you put this equipment into a training program, i.e. a curriculum? Well, designing a program, whether it's a single course or a full-blown curriculum from scratch, it doesn't have to be overwhelming or intimidating, even though it often feels that way. In fact, it can be even better than buying a prepackaged program, although we do have those as well, if that's a better fit for you. But if you're designing your own, it can be a better fit, especially once you have all the building blocks in place. Designing your own program lets you do things like customize your curriculum, aka your workouts, exactly to your students' needs. And because you built it, you can change it at any time to suit your students as they progress. And then by investing your time up front, you save your money. You know how you, you know you can always either spend your time or your money. In this case, spending time might be the only asset that you have. Um, now, I know that as an educator, you're probably all very familiar with these core elements of curriculum building, um, but they alone aren't enough to help your students reach their goals without the tools and the equipment that are needed to get there. So we are going to get right into the reason that we're all here today, and we're going to put our hands on the tools and equipment starting now. So we're going to start today with our cyber learning catalog. Go ahead and open up uh, Chrome or uh, Firefox. Those are our preferred browsers. And we are headed to projectaries.academy. That's here. I'll also go ahead and pop it in the chat in case it's easier for us all to click on. Woo, the keyboard is hidden behind my mic here. Sorry about that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and unmute the attendees as well. So if anyone's having trouble along the way, Kate, they can uh, should be able to just speak up here and ask you a question. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. As things as we as we move through, if I'm moving too quickly or if your screen is taking a little bit longer to load, feel free to raise your hand to just pop in and say something, put something in the chat. We'll be keeping an eye on that as well. We want to make sure that nobody gets left behind today. Great. Yep, I, I, everyone should have the ability to unmute themselves or raise their hand as well, um, if you prefer that method. Excellent. So hopefully uh, by this point, everyone has made it to Project Aries Academy on either Chrome or Firefox. Uh, and again, if we're moving too quickly at any point, please just say something. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to go here to our cyber learning catalog. And just click right on that. Once we get in here, Feel free to click around while I walk you through a little of what this catalog is all about. You don't have to follow along with me if you don't want to. It's all about exploring, putting your hands on the platform. So the Cyber Learning Catalog is our one-stop shop for seeing all of the equipment in Project Aries at a glance. Now there are three main categories of equipment that we will break down in just a minute. But between the cyber learning games and the battle rooms and the missions, the Project Aries gym is chock full of equipment that'll help train any cybersecurity skill. Now, each of these areas inside uh, the Project Aries gym contains different workout machines that are designed to train those specific cybersecurity skills. So if you wanted to train software development, for example, there's a foundational scenario for that. There's a battle room for that. With the cyber learning catalog here, instructors can narrow their search to red or blue scenarios, or they can map to their nice categories. You can click on each workout scenario to get an in-depth look at what cybersecurity muscles your students will be training. So for those of you who haven't already, go ahead and click on a scenario like I just did, any scenario, it doesn't matter which one. And what you're seeing is exactly what your students see when they come into the Project Aries Cyber Learning Catalog. It's an overview of what they'll be doing, some prerequisite skills, and um, things that they should do to just, you know, play fair. But as an instructor, you get a view that's visible only to you, and it's a bit more tailored to what you need. And you are about to see that right now. So let's get everyone logged in. 
we move away and head back to our PowerPoint here. Now, what we can see here on the screen are all of the usernames and passwords that are associated with uh, your name that you'll see. There are no name repeats, at least not with the last letter of you, or I'm sorry, the first letter of your last name. Uh, so go ahead and find your name there, and then you can type in your email and your password. And where you're going to put that in is right here on this same cyber learning catalog you were in. Just go ahead to this login button right here. Click on that. That'll open up our app. I'll also put this link into the chat just in case. So that's where you can go to log in. This will automatically log me in, so don't look at that yet. I'm also going to just go ahead and paste, uh, copy and paste this name and email list into the chat in case that's easier for everyone to use rather than trying to type off of the screen in case you're switching between uh, screens on one monitor. And we'll give everyone uh, a couple of, oh, the password's the same for everyone. That'll be your password. I'm gonna give everyone a couple of seconds here to get logged in. And then we'll uh, we'll move on to the next area. Now, Angela, here I'm seeing that my chat says two organizers only. So can I, if I can get a confirmation from someone that they're able to see these emails, that would be fabulous. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I might copy and paste them in to make sure everybody can see. Okay everything to the entire audience. Okay, let's try that now to everyone and then the password. I'm gonna send this to the entire audience as well. Perfect. Okay, I think that worked, yes, to everyone. Looks like it. So we'll give everyone about 30 seconds here to uh, to get themselves logged in. Again, we do recommend Chrome or Firefox because those are the browsers that we have made ourselves 100% compatible with. It's not to say that if you tried to use another browser that you might not have success. I know Edge almost always works, but we can't guarantee that it will. So we can guarantee success with Chrome or Firefox and we're all about success. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. Um, for those of you that would like for me to slow down, again, just, just let us know. So what you're seeing now is the Project Aries app, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag my browser back over. We'll come back to some of these other areas here in, uh, in just a moment, but for now, we're gonna stick with our learning catalog. So we'll go ahead and give that a click. If we jump into uh, any scenario, let's go back to VR1 where I was earlier, we're gonna see a new tab now, and that new tab is called Instructor Information. You should all have this on your screens. So hey, hey. as you can see, yes. We have a uh, individual, um, Eddie, who I think was having a little bit of trouble logging in. Okay. Really quick, let me make sure he's on our list here. Yeah, Eddie L, um, your email is project.aries.ninja plus zero two at gmail.com. So if you go to that Project Aries Academy webpage and then click on login, that's where you'll put in that Gmail account and then the associated password as well. So I hope that helps. So I'll show, okay. I'll show on the screen here from here and then log in. That'll take you to the app.projectaries.academy and you can enter that username. If you're still having an issue, go ahead and pop that in the chat and we'll we'll come back to that. Right, so we've we've headed over into this uh, instructor information tab here. So as you can see, this tab provides step-by-step -step written and recorded instruction on exactly how to solve each objective in every project area scenario for instructor eyes only. So whether you are a seasoned pro um, or a brand new trainer, as some of you indicated that in the poll, this workout design tool is here to help everyone. All right, now we're gonna go back to our web page app by clicking on this home button here in the top left corner. And now it's officially time to hop into our training ground and have a look at the Project Area Cyber Gym through the eyes of a student. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click start learning right here. 
that'll open a new tab for you. Keep all these tabs open, we'll come back to them. Now, because it's hosted in the cloud, the training ground is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that means that you can train anytime, anywhere, no matter whether you want to teach the equipment or to use it yourself. Now on the screen that you just saw loaded here, it, depending on your internet speed, because we are hosted in the cloud, it can sometimes take up to two or three minutes to load. Um, it might depend on how much bandwidth is being consumed by being in the webinar and using Project Aries at the same time. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log into the system for those who are uh, moving along at the same speed as my computer, and I'll come back and make sure that everyone's with us before we go into the battle room. So for now, you don't need to click around with me unless you want to, um, and we'll give it a couple minutes for everyone to load. For those of you who are at this screen, you're gonna keep player selected and then go ahead and click continue. Now, the first time that a student or a player launches the platform, they're gonna be guided through a tutorial that's designed to demonstrate the step-by-step -step use of a scenario, which is what we call each of the workout machines on the gym floor. That tutorial is led by our platforms guide, Athena, but today it'll be led by me. Yeah, it never gets old. Did we mention this is a gaming platform? So first things first, if you'd like to adjust the sound settings, you can do that by clicking on this settings button down here on the bottom right. Personally, I really like the music. It kind of puts me in the gaming zone. Uh, but if you prefer to, for it to be off while you work, go for it. You can toggle any of these down as much as you'd like to. Okay, so we will do a quick tour. I know some of you are probably still waiting for your browser to load. Um, and we'll just get you oriented here before we dive into our scenario. So on the right, your students will see their usernames and their ranks, uh, how close they are to a promotion, so to speak. Ooh, I'm very close. <gasps> Maybe today will be the day. And then uh, their level. Now, depending on what type of equipment they use, students can earn badges for the skills that they build as they demonstrate that commitment and their dedication to their training and to their education. Uh, and it's this tangible evidence of progress uh, that, that really fosters innovation. It, it demonstrates how the training that they're doing in the gym translates to the work that they're gonna be doing in the professional world, that, that um, translation of realism and gamification coming together, really real scenarios. And then similarly, the mission coins are awarded when students successfully complete a real world simulation of a cybersecurity crisis, as we said, with both those red and blue scenarios available that you can check out more in your uh, cyber learning catalog. And by the way, that cyber learning catalog that we were looking at earlier is available to anyone. You don't have to be logged into Project Aries to look at it. You only have to be logged in as a trainer, as an instructor, uh, to be able to see the solutions. Now, back here on the map, you can now see all of the equipment that I mentioned earlier. And just like a gym has equipment for everyone from couch potatoes to, give me a muscly dude, Dwayne Johnson, uh, project base can be used for SAC teams, analysts, network teams, dev teams, and students who all need a safe space for hands-on practice. And here we've organized our gym to build cyber muscles gradually, starting with the cyber learning games over here on the right, and then the media center that builds that foundation and the stamina, and then moving on to our foundational scenarios that we call battle rooms to really define those muscles, and then finally executing those red or blue specialized scenarios that we call missions. And you can think of those in a gym setting kind of like American Ninja Warrior or um, Ultimate Beastmaster obstacle courses. Today, though, we are going to be focusing our attention, of course, on our foundational scenarios, our battle rooms, and specifically battle room nine, forensics. So at this point, we should all be looking at this map here. So we're gonna go ahead and navigate to battle room nine. Again, if you have not had a chance to get your platform to load yet, just let us know, and we can come back and walk you through this when it has loaded. For those of you who are here, though, we're gonna click on battle rooms here on the left, That'll take us to our headquarters in Colorado. The Europeans uh, among us like to joke that Americans think they're the center of the world. No, no, our headquarters <laughs> are in Colorado, we promise. And then we'll click on the battle rooms at the bottom of the screen here, and that'll launch us into our battle rooms. 
Now, what you're seeing here is not going to be exactly what I'm seeing. Um, I have the ability to play all of these scenarios, of course, because I'm, I'm a trainer in the gym. When you are a trainer in the gym, you'll be able to see which scenarios you have access to and play on them, of course. Uh, but for now, we just wanted you to have visibility of what there is. If you click on this arrow on the right here, that'll take you over to Battle Room 9, and you should have the ability to click play on that scenario. Do that. And here you're gonna see that our system is building from a cached uh, system that it's got in the back. So we should only take about 30 seconds to one minute for this to load. And while we wait for it to load, is there anybody who has not been able to reach this point or anyone who's a little bit lost and we can, we can try and catch you up? I am monitoring. I don't see anyone else having challenges yet. So that is a good thing. Okay. We'll consider no news good news. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> um, the login, the username isn't considered valid. Um, is the uh, error message they're getting? Which which user is it? Eddie. To copy that email exactly as it is out of the chat and make sure that there are no spaces on either side. Yeah. And if you're still having an issue, Eddie, we've got we've got other accounts that we can that we can give to you to use. Yeah. I'm going to send that directly to you, Eddie, just to make sure that no spaces on either side for that email. And if that one doesn't work, then let me paste another one into the chat for you, Angela. Okay. And you can send that one and hopefully that'll get you there. Okay. I'm going to do that really quick. Perfect. And Eddie, you don't need to you don't need to memorize where how to get here and where we were. If you do, great. If you don't, it's totally fine. I can come back and 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 catch you up with uh, with everyone. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So by this point, we should all have a gold button down here. And what we're going to want to do is click on that. If you don't yet, that's okay. It'll load uh, shortly, and then you'll just click on that gold button to come in here. For now, I'm just gonna give a quick tour. Uh, for those of you who have been inside Project Aries before, you're probably far ahead of me by this point. That's fine. This is meant for you to put your hands on it, go do your thing. For those of you who do want a tour, we're gonna jump into that now. So I wanna draw your attention to a few things here before I turn you all loose. What you're seeing right now, which of course for this one is extremely small, um, but it's something that you might be needing in other uh, scenarios as you work your way through the objectives for each of our battle rooms and missions. Over here on the right, you'll find the objectives. The amount varies from battle room to battle room. This one has 39. And this little gold question mark here, don't click it. These are your hints. Each objective has a handful of hints that increase in helpfulness until they finally give the answer. I will click it and show you what it looks like. And the reason we say that is because we don't punish learning by subtracting points in our battleground. If you need hints, we do encourage you to, to take the hints that you need. We also encourage studying as opposed to punishing. So at the end, if you have any of your hints for each of the objectives, and it goes objective by objective, you'll get you lose the ability to get those bonus points. Again, you'll still get full marks, um, but you can just get extra credit at the end that'll, that'll push you over the top if you've, if you've done your studying beforehand. If you don't care about your score um, for this particular, free to click on these and see what the hints are like as we go through. They increase in order of, um, I suppose we can say, hand-holding uh, until by the time you get to the end, it will give you the answer. So I'm going to close that really quickly so that nobody sees it. And good news, Eddie got in, so we're... Ah, good to go. <laughs> excellent. So Eddie, from here, you'll be clicking on the start learning um, on the bottom left of your screen. Once project area loads, keep it on player and click continue. Or launch, I, don't, I think it's continue. And then battle rooms in the top left. And then on the bottom of the screen. So underneath this objectives box, you're gonna see a button that says instructions. You can find this in all of our scenarios. It's where you're gonna find information you'll need like passwords to certain areas inside the virtual desktop, 
the rules of engagement, the time that you have to complete your scenario, and so on. You can also find that inside the Cyber, uh, Cyber Learning Catalog. But for our purposes today, we're going to want to use this virtual desktop to complete our objectives. And the way that I just did that was I clicked on this called VNC Access uh, right down here at the bottom left. And that'll open up a new tab where we can get down to work. So in this battle room, you're going to use some hard hitting forensic tools like Autopsy and Registry Explorer to both research and provide the necessary evidence that's needed to support the case of an intrusion. If you are successful, then you demonstrated the ability to collect data recovery and disk image analysis and forensic analysis. I want to pop back to our PowerPoint here just for a second to show you the tools that you'll have access to inside this battle room. So you're going to have access to autopsy. And for those of you um, for whom this is new, autopsy um, is a platform and it's an interface um, that allows you to recover files. Um, and students that are working through those tasks inside project areas, they get to uh, get exposed to this kind of tool that allows them to do things like timeline analysis and hash filtering and everything that you can see here. So this is available on the uh, virtual desktop of Battle Room 9, along with, um, with these two tools that we can see here. So we've got the uh, free open source program, and then we also have the uh, Windows Registry Explorer uh, that'll allow you to conduct all of the necessary research that you will need to do to be able to support your case of the intrusion. And we will come back to our, let me see, this here. Yep. So far, so good. Perfect. Now, from inside this virtual machine itself, you're going to be answering your objectives by going to this shortcut on the desktop, Q&A portal. We'll go ahead and open that. You can read your questions here, and then you can solve them with the tools before heading into the Q&A portal to submit your answers. All you have to do is click on the question. It will show you these questions match exactly the questions that we can see here inside the battle room itself. And when you have successfully answered a question, you'll see this little uh, button here turn into a check mark, and that'll show you that you finished it. You'll see your score come in up here. And then if you haven't used hints at the very end, you'll see your score boost with the amount of hints um, that you didn't use. Uh, yes, and I think I've gone through all of those. So from here, Angela and I are going to turn you loose. And the next, oh, let's say 20 minutes or so is yours to tackle this battle room. Um, again, feel free to unmute yourself, ask us questions, ask for help if you need it. Um, if you have some experience, but you need some help, then I recommend using your hints over here, seeing how far you can get um, before you need the answer. If you're a complete beginner, as a few of you indicated that you were, and you need a, a big refresh, that's not a problem. You can head back to this tab over here that we kept open, pop into your learning catalog, come into Battle Room 9, and you can follow all of the instructions that you need to um, in order to go through and see what this battle room is like. I do recommend starting with uh, the first task because that will show you if you're not familiar with it, it'll show you how to set up autopsy and export all the things that you need to your desktop so that you can work through the rest of the objectives. But then once you start working through the rest of the objectives, you don't need to do them in any particular order. Our battle rooms are designed to be able to be um, sporadic. The tasks don't increase difficulty as they get bigger. It's just a series of, um, yeah, you can think of it as different kinds of exercises. Doing a plank is not necessarily harder than doing squats. Uh, so they're, they're organized just however you would like to tackle them. So like I said, we'll be here if you have any questions. And uh, in the meantime, we will, we will go ahead and put ourselves on mute. This is where I encourage you to turn your music volume up in the settings. Good luck and have fun. Thanks, Kate. I'll be monitoring the chat as well. So if anybody does have trouble um, moving through something, I am here and everything out for you guys.
So far, so good, Kate. Again, if anyone's having trouble, just ping me with a question or you should be able to unmute yourself or raise your hand too. Good. We have a comment from a user that um, they're a beginner and using the lab guide that was in the email. We sent a series of emails out before the webinar just to get everybody acquainted, Kate. And it sounds like that lab guide in the email was really helpful to get started. So that's great to hear. Thanks for letting us know. That's fabulous. Yes. Very, very glad to hear it. And uh, the lab guide is, is very similar to the uh, cyber learning catalog that we also have here. Um, and of course, you know, how, however it helps to be able to go through and see the answers. Some people want screenshots, some people want videos, some people like to read. We try and provide as much as possible um, so that whatever level you're at, you'll be able to tackle it. We'll also make sure to post um, some of those additional materials too in the on-demand landing page as well. So you can always go back and kind of reference some of those things um, at any time. And we'll post this, this slide deck as well. Okay. Still doing good, Kate.
Give it another 10 minutes or so. Looks like everyone's moving along pretty well, Kate. That's great. Thanks. Perfect. And for those of you who have been following along with me, I have been slowly working my way through the first objective here uh, in order to show you how you answer. Uh, for those of you who may not have been following along, that's completely fine. Remember that we've got our guide over here that'll show you exactly how to do it if you need to or if you want to test yourself that you can come in here to the hints and see if those are of use to you at all thank you and for those of you who are looking here um, if we come back to the screen over here you'll see now that this check mark has gone off and that i've received points for the objective that i just completed And actually, Kate, probably going to run for another five more minutes or so, because I know we have a couple other things that we want to get through before um, we adjourn for the for the day. We do. So five, yeah. five more minutes, five minute warning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can stay in and play a little longer and just kind of watch with one eye as we go through everything else if you want to. But we will be showing some other things um, yep. as we go here for the rest.
do a two minute warning here, but of course, like Kate said, you can keep playing as we go through a couple other features of Project Aries. Give everyone another minute here. All right, Kate, I think we're good. We can um, go through a couple other points that we had for uh, before wrapping up. Perfect. And for those of you who are following along here, you've seen how I was able to get to the time zone and you can see it right there. There you go. So for me, I completed the first two objectives and we can see who's uh, who has been busily doing other things. Uh, if you want to stay in and keep playing with it, feel free. I do recommend having a second screen so that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, otherwise, feel free to follow along with me if you feel like you've gotten your fill, and uh, we'll look at some other things that uh, you can that you can access on side on on side on the uh, Project Aries platform. Um, so once you're done training for the day, uh, as we are today, then you're going to come back here to your battle room area. Again, it's the tab at the top of your screen, just the standard battle room screen. Uh, and you're going to click on this button here, Battle Control, down at the bottom. And then we're going to click back on World Map. That's going to give you the option to either uh, save your room and come back um, or to end your scenario entirely. If students do choose to save, then the clock will pause and they'll be able to come back for the next seven days to wrap up. But for our purposes, we do want to go ahead and finish. So I'm going to click on End Battle Room, and that'll give us a look at our playback. And we'll click on OK. Ah, and I didn't get the opportunity to look at my playback, probably because I didn't solve enough objectives. We'll look at the playback <laughs> of that session as we log in as a trainer. So once you've come back to the map here, if you get a loading screen, then do give it an opportunity to just uh, finish that loading before you close the tab. We are just going to go ahead and close the tab once we're back on this map. 
you'll see that your VNC terminal has kicked you out. That's okay. That's because you've ended your battle room. Uh, I'm also going to mute my site so it doesn't get a little bit too much noise in here. Please don't close your entire browser. If you do, that's okay. You can come right back to projectdaries.academy, but you might have to log back in again. Um, you can just close this tab and it'll take you right back to your web app. Now, if you happen to be inside your learning curriculum as I am, then you can go back to the home button by clicking here on the top left. And this time we're going to launch the platform and launch in trainer mode so that you can see what it looks like from an instructor's view. So again, we'll click on start learning down here on the bottom left. Now trainer mode um, is pretty critical to a well-rounded classroom experience because from this view, you can keep tabs on student progress in you know, one easy access location. So when you first log into the trainer view, you're gonna see all kinds of tools that are available to you in the welcome screen. So we'll get there in a moment. When you get this user selection, you're gonna click on the trainer button and then we'll go ahead and continue. And once uh, Project Aries has reloaded inside the trainer view, the first thing that's gonna pop up is this area down here. If you saw this as a pop-up and you clicked the X and thought, oh no, how do I get back? That's okay, don't worry. You can come back down here to the trainer button at any time and that will show you this area again. Let's take a look at a few of these things. First, you're gonna see the live event board. Now the live event board lets you see all of the activity inside your organization from any time range that you choose. So you can see how your students are progressing, what they're working on, and uh, who has been busy competing against who. Whom. You can see all of that in here. And then we also have custom leaderboards. Now some of you um, will likely not have any custom leaderboards that have been set up, but what we can see here is if you decide to do a competition in your classroom, or if you decide that you want to, I don't know, uh, see who finishes their test the first or whatever you wanna do, you could project this up on the screen of your classroom. You can share it virtually if you're doing uh, virtual teaching. Uh, all our possibilities to share how your students are doing. You can either share these with high scores, which does take the time into account, so who's going the fastest if scores are tied, uh, or you can go by some total, who has done the most in any battle room over the course of your semester, and it will uh, total all of those up. Two different methods to look at custom leaderboards. The trainer tool screen is also where you're gonna have the ability to be able to disable hints and Athena for your organization. And, you know, for example, maybe you would want to turn off those hints, those little golden buttons that we were looking at if you have an exam with your students and you, will, you don't want them to be able to cheat. And then, of course, over here uh, on our map, no gym is complete without a personal trainer's ability to really get in on that action. Uh, so you need to be able to observe and encourage and teach right alongside your students. And as a trainer, you have the ability to join any active mission that your students are playing to observe and assist or heckle at your own discretion, depending on how badly they're doing uh, in real time. Now, clicking back to our web app here, we're gonna hop into one trainer location, and that's gonna be your dashboard. And here, I will see, you will not see any information because of course your account is uh, brand new, there is no information to display, so you can just have a look at my screen really quickly. Once your organization has been built up and you've got students in here, um, then you're gonna be able to see a compilation of everything that they have completed. Um, and it, the idea is to make grading as easy as possible and it stops you from having to go through individual student reports and reviews, although you can do that as well from inside Project Aries if you wanna get really granular about their muscle development and I will show you now how to do that. When your student has completed a battle room, they're going to get a screen called the battle room playback. And the way that you can access that as a trainer, and something I wanna show you, in your trainer mode, if you go back to battle rooms, you'll see that you're not able to click on the play button. That's intended. Uh, you would have to join your students who are playing inside a mission, but we want you to be able to see the history of a battle room. So for instance, let's go ahead and click on this. We're gonna come in and find a player, any student that you want, and we'll see if they have any history in here. As they play, we can see that they do. So in here, it looks like there were three objectives solved. So let's see, I happen to know this is Alan. So let's see what Alan's been up to. Now, as this loads, what you can see as a trainer, and this is exactly what your students will see at the end of their sessions, and you can come in and look at any time again, 
you can see when exactly during their entire time that they were playing when they did things that they did. You can see the commands that they entered all along here. You could scroll down to the bottom and see what they did. You can see the hints that they used and when they used them so that you can keep track of that. And you can also see any comments that you might have made to them during the session. All of it is logged here so that you can very easily see the duration of the session and what they did and how they did it. Again, we've compiled that here into the dashboard to try and make it a little bit more of a holistic view. This is something that is in beta mode, so we really encourage you to come in and tell us what you think of this. How can this be better? How can we help you as an instructor to get that view that helps you with your students? Because at the end of the day, regardless of uh, how you use project areas or how your students use project areas, um, the, the important thing is to always make sure that the student is reaching the goals that they set. You know, Project Aries was designed to um, combine software and to combine game of and services to empower everyone on the training ground um, to work as hard as they can. And I, I think I, I don't speak only for myself when I say that we could not be more proud to share it with you. Um, so I would like to thank the Project Aries teams for all the hard work that they do every day, making the training ground what it is. Um, and I'd like to thank all of you for coming out today and tuning into uh, this recording later online. And I'll hand back off to Angela to wrap us up. Perfect. Thanks so much, Kate. And thank you to everyone that was participating and following along and completing objectives. We hope that this really gave you a sense of how um, powerful and useful hands-on labs can be to teach, in this case, cybersecurity forensics. But we have a lot of other scenarios, as you saw in our catalog, to choose from as well. So we hope this gave you a, a little bit of a taste of what that is like. Just a couple of follow-on notes here. Um, if you are interested in this specific scenario, we do um, encourage you to schedule a consultation with our friend Nick Fritz. Um, he is available to talk to you about this scenario or any scenario and how it can align to your curriculum or your training program. Um, I think he's on, uh, on this webinar as well, so if you have a specific question for him, um, please go ahead and pop it in the chat and we'll make sure that he gets it personally. Um, otherwise, in addition to that, if you want to keep playing um, after the session is over, we totally get that. Um, that means we've done our job, right, Kate? So we do have a additional sample scenario that you can play um, for free on our website. Um, you can select uh, the play trial button that is on the Project Aries Data Academy home screen. So if you just go to Project Aries Academy, scroll down just a little bit and you'll be able to see that play trial button yep just scroll down a smidge yes right there and you'll be able to play another sample scenario there's four objectives in that one um so you can continue to get your hands on the platform and just experience it for yourself a little bit further so we're really happy that everybody was able to join today and again we hope this helped you kind of get the sense of how to put these goals in context for um, whatever cybersecurity training program or course that you have available. And just to wrap up, um, we are again gonna post this recording online and we'll make sure to email each of you who have registered and attended the recording as well. And don't forget there is a complete listing of our um, upcoming on-demand webinars on our information hub section of our website. So be sure to check those out and stay tuned for more hands-on live scenario events that will be coming soon. Um, so Kate, this is probably not the last time we're gonna be talking to you. <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Let me just double check the chat and just make sure everybody is good to go. All right. Excellent. Well, again, thank you everyone for participating. You enjoyed this live play forensic scenario session and we will catch you on the training ground again soon. Thank you, Kate, so much for your help and walking us through everything. My pleasure. And thank you all. We will see you on the training ground. Have a great day.